Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Dr. Dominika Hertzberg. She's a chiropractic physician, acupuncturist, yoga teacher, exercise and functional movement specialist, as well as the owner of Balanced Flow Wellness in Chicago, Illinois. Now she's on a mission just like me to help women age well by not accepting or enduring the discomfort that comes with the hormone shifts as you get older. So on this episode, we're going to be talking a lot about the different things that women experience and our personal experiences and how Dominique is helping folks in her office with all aspects from vaginal health to bladder leakage to hormones and even aches and pains. This one's a fun podcast because we kind of go into some of the really cool things that she is using, like tech devices, including a muscle stimulator that can help you with exercises. So like cut time off your exercises and help with belly fat. How cool is that? So let's introduce you to Dr. Dominika Hertzberg. Hey, Health Junkies. I have Dominika Hertzberg on, and we are going to be talking about probably at this moment in time, my favorite subject, getting older, perimenopause, and what the heck we need to do about these things to help us survive the, let's say, the change in energy that's going on within our body. So Dominika, welcome to the Health Fix podcast. Thank you so much. I am super excited to be here and talk to you about perimenopause, vaginas, and all beautiful things (laughs) women-related. (laughs) <laughs> love it. Love it. I love that you went right to talking about vaginas because really, honestly, a lot of women, we we're still in that age range where it's a little bit like, mm, do we talk about it? Do we not? And and I'm loving that more people are focusing their practices directly on helping women survive this crazy time in life. Now, oh, right. go ahead. yeah, yeah. Before we hit record, you you and I just kind of chatted like, how it's interesting, you know, in our 20s, we focus on certain things in our practices and your practice is, is similar to mine um, in terms of wanting to offer everything for for women. And you have a physical location, so we'll talk about that in a second. But give us a little story in, in the background of how you noticed your body start to change, how different symptoms you started to notice and when you were like, I need to create a, a wellness center for helping women go through the same thing. Give us this background story. So, you know, I came to it way too late. And I'm hoping that other women who listen to your podcast are going to catch those symptoms much earlier on. My practice, as you mentioned, it began in 2013, 2014, and it was primarily physical therapy place. And I was still young and beautiful, was still young and beautiful, by the way. But at this time, all you want is, you know, your body, your bank account, your boyfriend, all the fun bees. So we did this for a while. And then as I turned 30, I wanted to get pregnant and I couldn't. Um, it was quite a journey. We can talk about it in some other episode. <laughs> <laughs> but, but through this uh, whole fertility journey, I started to notice that maybe there's a little bit more going on. It's not, it was my, my age. They mm-hmm. call it, unfortunately, geatric pregnancy for a reason. It's a yucky term, <laughs> but that's when your ovaries are deciding to take a little nap. Mm-hmm. And hey, it's your progesterone. I didn't know that. I had no <laughs> idea. I thought it was just me. There was something wrong with me. And then I learned that it's all women between the ages of 35 and what is it, like 51, 52? Oh, gosh. I'd say it's Sometimes. even later sometimes, even into like 55, we're having women See? extend. It's crazy. Ex- it's the torture extends, right? So I a, can't get pregnant, B, finally get pregnant. And then all of a sudden I am angry and I'm a really chill person. I was a yogi, right? (laughs) So meditation and yoga practice were a part of my daily life. And now I'm losing temper. I run just like you. I run a few businesses and I all of a sudden started to get overwhelmed by dirty dishes. Mm -hmm. How ridiculous. You're like, yep. uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Full on meltdowns uh, over the dumbest things. Yep. The Mm -hmm. dumbest things. And is that normal? No, it's typical, but it's Mm -hmm. not normal. 
Mm-hmm. So I started to look for answers because we won't just settle for feeling miserable, especially when I have two kids now who really need me and need me for much for much longer because they're babies. So I got my blood work done. I learned about perimenopause and figured out, Dom, whether you like it or not, you're getting there. You're in it. You're in it to win it and let's make <laughs> the best out of it. That was kind of the beginning stage. And and then we started to incorporate a bunch of fun things into the practice to help other women who were in the same predicament to get better. Yeah. Oh, it's good stuff. It's good stuff. And and I would agree that I kind of came to it late too. Maybe I was in denial, you know, oh, going yeah. like, oh, there's no way that my hormones are shifting right now. Like, and, and and for me, it was definitely seeing the same thing, like <laughs> dishes overwhelmed. I mean, mm. a bunch of patients on the schedule and schedule mishaps at my office would just throw me into a tailspin, like crazy mm-hmm. tailspin. And then I'm trying <laughs> to be like, everything's fine. And then inside, like, <sighs> do you remember the mental fog when you come home from work and then all you can do is stare at your phone. And well, I think there's a name for this right now. They call it social media dimension, <laughs> where you go on social media 100 times a day just so your brain can relax. Well, you're really doing the opposite. But sure. that's another thing, just the overall fatigue, both physical and emotional at the end of the day. Again, not normal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yeah, I I I remember staring at things going I should do something. I don't want to. I'm just going to sit here. And then the other for me was eating. I would just mindlessly oh. eat. <laughs> Were there your did you have favorites? Because I I developed a sweet tooth. Really? Really? Oh yeah. Me, I went hardcore on nuts. I I think either <laughs> I was a squirrel in my previous life or something but yeah it was like macadamia nuts I could pound like literally a pound of them I could eat it mindlessly which my god like how many calories is that but like right it's that, good but it's not <laughs> not a pound at a time not a pound at a time but yeah I could I can crush some nuts so you you went sweet tooth what kind of sweet tooth stuff were you going after so you see that was the problem so I was always super healthy and no one in my family had any issues with sugar levels of diabetes and also we're from Poland I'm from Poland where you're eating very wholesome whole foods uh, with addition of really good healthy meat here a little bit different and I developed pre-diabetes while I was pregnant which again I'm like what my BMI is perfect I am wonderful and young and beautiful what is happening to me And stats show it's, which is another kind of a bummer, just like geriatric pregnancy is if you have prediabetes while pregnant, you are most likely, or gestational diabetes, you are most likely going to get prediabetes and diabetes later in life. And guess what? That girl, insulin resistance on steroids, another sign of perimenopause, isn't it? Oh, yes. Ah. Yes, it is. It's oh. So not. Uh So you know what? There's uh, something I was just reading recently, which made me laugh and also cry that we should be dead by 35 because that's when our reproduction dies. (laughs) But let's do happy now. Let's talk about happy things. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I mean, wow, that that's profound. And I am so you know, my my happy to that is I'm going to defy that. And like, you know, challenge challenge to do that, like, defy that by like i don't know three times let's go for three times 35 yes that's (laughs) right and now we have medical advances that allow us to live for gosh for almost ever but it's all about the quality of life so that's why i love what you do and what your guests do because we are all on this mission to defy (laughs) the crapitude to live not only longer but have a fantastic quality of life. Mm-hmm. That's what matters. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think you're in a situation where a lot of women are, I, I ended up not having kids. We, we just never achieved pregnancy, probably because I was too busy with my business and, like, you know, running around <laughs> that's doing your that. baby. That was, that's my baby. But, yeah. you know, a lot of women are having kids later 
And then like Mm -hmm. kids and perimenopause are like weaving together. So I'm seeing a lot of overwhelm, a lot of folks not like basically thinking that they're feeling symptoms because they just have, you know, a lot going on. But I'm like, no, I think, I think there's more to it. I love your saying about this. I was reading statistics yesterday too. I'm kind of sort of working on a book. I'll let you know when, when this materializes, but back in the seventies, only about two to 3% of women over 35 were having children right now, or the last, the latest legitimate stats are from uh, 2010s. It was close to 15% of women over 35 having children. So now we're faced exactly what you're saying, not only with inability to get pregnant easily, because we have stuff going on, we have jobs, we have, we have life to live. But then the aftermath is just crushing. Your hormones not only are depleted while you're pregnant, but then afterwards, when you're a 35, 39, 45 year old mother, everything just, bam, it just crashes down. So thankfully, we have some solutions now. Because there were none, there were none only a few years ago, none of us talked about it. Right, right. I know that's the thing. I feel so bad for, you know, folks who are in, in, in the 60s, an older range mm-hmm. where, where it was right at the cusp of, of folks not talking about these things. But of course, we can bring them in. We can bring you guys in and and help you out with some of these things. Now, what is like you you do so many things at your office, like I don't even know where to start. But but since we talked about vaginas, let's talk there first, because yep. I think for a lot of women, the incontinence, the painful sex, the dryness, mm-hmm. I think all of this we chalk up as like, it's stress. It's normal mm-hmm. to have a little incontinence because I had a baby or I'm just getting older. Let's talk about that a little bit. Kind of how have you seen that show up in your practice and what kind of things are you guys up to in your office with those? Sure. Uh, for me personally, definitely one of the things that happened was um, I just didn't want to be touched anymore. Mm-hmm not only by my husband, but also even when my kids wanted to snuggle, I was not into snuggling, period, which shows you that something is happening there on the oxytocin level, (laughs) as well, of course, as progesterone. So with my patients, it's the same thing. We don't want to talk about it because we think it's embarrassing that we pee ourselves when we jump, when we walk, that we can't, oh, oh gosh, during COVID, you're going to love that story. One of my very, very good friends, she is in her 40s right now. She loves playing golf. She went on a golf course and all the public bathrooms were closed during COVID. So she's suffering from urinary incontinence and she needs to go pee every couple of hours. She said it was miserable. And this inequality when it comes to men versus women, a guy can comfortably go behind the bush and keep playing the game. She couldn't. So she gave up golf completely during COVID, (laughs) even though it was one thing she loved. It was a baby, Mm. right? So what do we do? Uh, There's this amazing device uh, that I heard about called Mm Ancela. And it's made by a company called BTL, and it's not an endorsement or advertising in any shape or form. I wish they gave me money, but they don't. I paid them money. <laughs> <laughs> to get the device. But, exactly. But it's a non-invasive device that helps to, really, it's a big claim, but it helps to cure urinary incontinence. So the research studies that the company has done showed that after about six sessions on Amcella, they're 30 minute sessions, you sit there in your jeans, reading a book or working, um, they will help to decrease usage of pads or again, completely eradicate your dysfunction. So of course I got this for myself. Why, why wouldn't I? <laughs> for my patients. Right. And guess what? It worked. It's phenomenal. What happens is it's almost like Kegels on steroids where you experience close to 30,000 contractions within that 30 minute session. And it's not unpleasant. It's also not pleasant, but it's not unpleasant. It's just this weird sensation within the pelvic floor. And uh, it helps to stimulate collagen production. It helps to increase muscle mass as well. And it helps to lubricate epithelium. 
Wow. And that's what helps tremendously. So not only uh, the continence is going to hopefully go away, but also your sexual pleasure increases. And that's awesome. It's a big deal. A, a big, big deal. Because I mean, so many women, like probably the biggest statement I hear is, oh, yeah, my husband's still into it. I have to take one for the team, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. And I'm like, that's not fair. That's not. No, <laughs> exactly. And it's almost like, you know, we as women, we think that it's okay to suffer. We suffer when we have our first period. For those of us who have kids, when we have kids, and then this whole perimenopause, menopause, the vaginal dryness, the taking one for the team, and that era is done. It's done. We're not doing this anymore. So since I have so many toys, um, I'll take you, if you'd like, on the journey of what it is that I did and how I came yeah. to all those yeah. items. All right. So perimenopause, we know it's happening. I, I need to do something about this. So we started to incorporate uh, bioidentical hormones into the practice to help with the symptoms. And, you know, it's not necessarily cure, cure at all situation, but it's definitely helpful. You deal with supplements, which I love. I not I don't know that much about them, but I seek out other providers who do. <laughs> and I use supplements as well. So it was step one, but it doesn't fix everything. So what comes next? I could not lose my belly. It seems like such a minor thing, but it has so much to do with how you feel about yourself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you you know, the way that your spouse or your uh, partner is looking at you, they, they probably love you anyways, but you don't feel the same. <laughs> you don't yeah. feel the same way. Yeah. So I invested in MSculpt and Msella to help to bring my belly to order and bring my vaginal floor to order as well. That was helpful. That was successful. But what comes next is I don't have time to exercise anymore. Desire or time to exercise as much as I used to. Um, we are supposed to exercise 100 and is it 160, 150 minutes a week? Yes, yes. You know, uh, sometimes I can, but in my 40s, I don't know if I want to. So what I did is brought in things like EMS training. I don't know if you're familiar with EMS. Yes. It's huge in Europe. Mm hmm and here, a 20-minute workout is equivalent of three almost hours of HIIT training. So I started doing this and increasing my muscle mass. So then I had energy, good sex life, <laughs> <laughs> no belly, and I was able to shave my workout time to really, if I wanted to, 20 minutes a day. And honestly, that transformation, those things helped me to become the person that I was in my 20s and that's amazing nice nice but that's what i do i i like all of those things and i've you know tried and seen all of those things throughout the course of time and of course bioidentical hormones are something that i also use in my practice too and mm -hmm. they can be game changers but like you said they're not everything and that's one thing i definitely want people to realize that we have yes. there needs to be a holistic approach not just Here's your bioidenticals because I'm the mm -hmm. one people see when they go south and they don't work, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's the hard part. Now, so with, with the, the transformation, right, that you had, I think a lot of people will be like, okay, that's nice. That that's you. Right. And, and one of the, the sad things is that I think a lot of women are kind of resigned to seeing how their mom aged or their grandma, mm -hmm. aunts, you know, someone significant in their life, and they're like, this is as good as it gets, or I don't have time to take care of myself, kind of like you were saying, with the workouts and using the EMS workouts. I don't think a lot of people have been exposed to the EMS yeah. workouts, though. I mean, I, I'm aware, but let's let's describe those. Like, if if someone's using those, how, how does it exactly work? Give, sure. give folks the background. Uh, so the background of electromyostimulation in general, it originated in Europe, in Germany, about 15 years ago now. The funny thing is when you go to even Poland and my little tiny town by Oświęcim, Auschwitz, where I was born, there's EMS studios on every corner. Really? So it's huge in Europe, yes. <laughs> 
I learned about it because my best friend, Magda, is paralyzed waist down. She got meningitis when she was in high school. And she started using EMS to uh, prevent atrophy, the dying of her leg muscles. So I thought, you know what, let's try this. Uh, the electromuscle stimulation operates on the entire body. You have those electrodes that are hooked up to your arms, your legs, your butt, your chest, your core. Sounds very high tech and it is, but it's actually quite comfortable. The suit is then wetted with water to conduct the impulses better. And you get 93% of your entire musculature in your body gets contracted while you are performing different exercises like squats, lunges, crunches, you name it. And it's not painful at all. I would almost say it feels like your traditional stem machine, mm -hmm. but amplified. Okay. Okay. And within, uh, from what I've noticed with my patients and clients, within three to four visits, sessions, their back pain completely goes away. I have few patients who had back surgeries and used this as post -hab, post rehabilitation. And it was amazing how quickly it worked. So the promise is that your function and your endurance is going to improve. And is there going to be some muscle hypertrophy, some muscle growth? Sure. But that's when the supplements come in. Because as you and I know very well, you can't work out only without proper nutrition and supplementation to experience this tremendous change. So like you said, it's <laughs> all of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I love the EMS stuff. I mean, we, let's say, I think I had somebody from Katsu, the, the Katsu company yeah. on the podcast a while back, but I've seen it before just in rehab, like your, your friend was experiencing mm -hmm. and was like, whoa, this is really neat. But, you know, I, I didn't connect it in my head about using it for fatigue and for folks mm -hmm. who are just like, man, I am not feeling a workout and, and to use the circulation component there to help. So Learning new things today. Learning new things. Learning new things. And, you know, it's like, imagine yourself right now. How much easier would it be for you to figure out, I don't know, Tuesday afternoon, you do a workout for 20 minutes, and then you just get to live life. Of course, people go to the gym and go for walks for their mental health as well. But you know that you've already covered the health benefits. That's done. You're fine. Now, everything else you do is a bonus. It's pleasure and not a must. That's really cool. Hopefully we'll come over closer to you and we get to hang out more. <laughs> I know. I would love to go check that out. I'd love to go check that out. And of course, not too far from me, guys. She's in Chicago. So not too far from, from where I'm hanging out these days. Not too far. <laughs> now, in terms of, you know, you're mentioning the free time, you're mentioning kind of the mood. One of the mm -hmm. other things I notice is, is as we get older, we start to feel like, like you said, we, we don't feel so good in our body and we feel like mm -hmm. something's either hijacked it or, <laughs> or I, do they, we just don't feel comfortable. And one of the biggest things about not feeling comfortable in the body is that a lot of women experience gut issues, like bloating mm -hmm. and acid reflux and that side of things. What are your go-tos for helping the digestive system? What have you guys been up to in that department? I, my, based on the research that I've done and the folks I've talked to, a lot of this has to do with insulin resistance. Would you agree? Pretty heavily mm -hmm. because now we have like the cortisol component along with the de yeah. decrease in <laughs> you know, stress eating. So, <laughs> totally. So it's a really horrible answer, but I'll ask you some questions too because I want to know your opinion. So I, I, I've noticed that stress reduction, and no one wants to hear that. What does stress reduction mean? <laughs> right. But that that's what helps a lot. And that's such an easy thing to do aside from the supplementation. Uh, getting into meditation practice or at least breathing practice where you can stop for a moment during the day and breathe, that helps a lot with whatever happen whatever is happening in your gut. But I do have a question for you because you know everything about this and I don't. Can you tell me about probi probiotics and prebiotics? Yeah. What is yeah. your thought on that? <laughs> well, it depends, right? It depends. Right. Because if we throw prebiotics, which of course are fiber into the system and mm -hmm. someone can't tolerate that because either their immune system of their gut is so low because they've been stressed for so long 
or they have a bunch of bacteria in the gut because maybe they have constipation or maybe, you know, they've just had a poor diet for a long time. And so maybe too much yeast, right? You put mm -hmm. in fiber and then you're going to sometimes have folks bloat up like, like this right away with the, the prebiotics. Yeah. So I, I'm pretty cautious on prebiotics. Probiotics, I'm super neurotic about what type. And <laughs> because I feel like a lot of companies went crazy and like everybody decided to create their own probiotic. Yeah. And it went wild. And I don't know. It's it's interesting that you're Polish. I my heritage is Polish as well. And and I always watched my grandma make yogurt. And mm -hmm. way back in the day. And so I met this gal, Natasha Trenev. She's Russian. And like her family has made yogurt for like 700 years. Like she has this crazy long history of yogurt making in her family. And anyway, she created a probiotic company. I honestly believe that her system of giving basic one pro, like one strain, not 85 different strains in a thing is the way to go. Oh my gosh. I love this. So I was just talking to a good friend of mine, Dr. Gupta, mm -hmm. uh, Rushi Gupta. She recently came out with a very interesting book as well, specifically on gut biome. And what I've learned <clears throat> is that uh, we are, you know, born with a certain set of gut microbioma, and it really develops until we're about three to five years old. And we're stuck with that colony for the rest of our lives. So it's not necessarily kind of like what you're saying to introduce a lot of things to your gut right away that you may be lacking, but to introduce one thing at a time, because uh, she was comparing it to high school, you know, when you're like enter high school and there's all those clicks, all those girls chit chatting in the corners, and then a new girl comes along. Yeah. That, that can be difficult. So you want that new girl, but you want a lot of that one new girl who can come in and you want to give give this girl power consistently every single day so to use maybe a probiotic that that is very high quality with very specific bacterium and do it consistently day after day until that girl gets integrated into the circle into the cycle right and then add more and more and more you just do it all at once it's yep. going to be a complete chaos so it's yep. cool you say that yeah. It all yeah. comes back full circle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's it's crazy. The gut's a crazy thing. And definitely, I mean, have I tried all the different comprehensive stuff? Yes, of course. Trial mm -hmm. and error. I mean, I've made all kinds of different switches over the years because of just figuring, oh gosh, this happens, this happens. But boy, the the natrin and ATREN probiotics, and like she doesn't give me any money to say this. I just it, they're you right. know a lot of my patients are like, oh, they're so expensive. And I'm like, yeah, but they're the only ones I've seen to actually move the needle on people's guts. And so anyway, that's kind of like my my go-to, unless of course we're doing some other kind of protocol, but really like if we're looking for basic probiotics to just help, especially in the perimenopause tra transition, yes. this this particular one seems to do well. And, and, and just singular lactobacillus just... Hey, health junkies, having been a former insomniac, I know how important sleep is for your health and daily performance. And when you can't sleep, the anxiety and frustration that shows up around bedtime can be intense. This is why I've partnered with Devin Burke and his Sleep Science Academy to help you end insomnia and sleep issues once and for all. How good would it feel to eliminate sleep anxiety? Stop waking up between two and 4 a.m. like clockwork, Feel rested when you wake up and not have to take handfuls of supplements or medications to do that. Devon's Sleep Science Academy is not another dial in your sleep hygiene program. It provides you with the support you need paired with cutting edge sleep technology to help you understand your sleep at a deep holistic level. Let's face it, most people spend $500 to $3,000 a year on supplements or meds for sleep. Not to mention all the lost productivity and being able to enjoy life to the fullest. Priceless. So with their no risk money back guarantee, what do you have to lose but another night of sleep? 
head to doctor spelled out j k r a u s e n d dot com and go to the tab that says podcast or click the link below this podcast episode that says sleep science academy to check out devin's sleep science academy being basic <laughs> you have to i'm definitely going to incorporate it and i really appreciate that you're saying this so food in general is so so important what you put in your body and the quality of food, the quality of supplements. And when you say it's expensive, <laughs> the sad truth is you get what you pay for. You really do. It goes with, you know, your vitamin D, which by the way, we should talk about too, because yeah. I think that's incredibly important. And more and more people know that they need to take vitamin D right now. But if your medical doctor prescribes you vitamin D, it's typically in such small quantities. It doesn't do anything. Yeah. Or we have the pharmaceutical version that gets prescribed and it's oh. D2, not D3, which a lot That's of people a whole don't different story. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm guessing you're seeing a lot of folks coming in, just being in the Northern Hemisphere and with the winter in Chicago too. And But I'm guessing you're seeing people really deficient. Oh, beyond. I And all, all, all races, it doesn't matter who you are, where you are from, as long as you live here, it's really, really tricky. I saw in the past six years, that's when we started to do labs, two people who had overtly high levels of vitamin D, and that's because they were on heavy supplementation. And we're talking of getting 100,000 mm -hmm. IUDs every couple of weeks of shots. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone else is just boom. And also, you know, I know you mentioned this in your on your website too, and in your practice, the lab values that we are seeing are so <sighs> skewed. Just because you are normal doesn't mean that you are normal if you are symptomatic. We are all so, so different. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, and, and the thing that kills me is our lab values are based off of people who are average and most people are sick. Right. <laughs> What's so sick? Exactly. Yeah. Um, for nutrition, so what do you tell your people? What kind of diet do you follow your patients? Uh, good question. The one that suits them the best is what I follow. I don't tend to subscribe to a, a specific. What we do is we figure out what works best for them because, you know, a lot of first and foremost, though, I will say organic. And, mm -hmm. you know, and if it's mm -hmm. not organic, you grew it in your backyard and you just didn't put anything on it, or, you know, you found a farmer that just didn't get certified, but everything's yes. close to nature. Like it's so important. And especially when we're talking about if you want to continue using wheat and dairy, I found a farm. So this will be relevant for anyone in the Chicago land area. There's a farm in Racine, Wisconsin that does wheat. They cut it by hand. And they've only ever grown the wheat on land that has never been like no, no pesticides put on to the land ever, which is this. sweet. It's called Anarchy Acres. I'm writing this down for myself. <gasps> yeah. And they you will know? deliver within a certain you know range. So you might be in the range. You might be in the range to be able to get it in the Chicagoland area. So with... Um... This gliadin is one big portion of what's happening, right? Have you noticed when you fly abroad to like you know, all European Union countries pretty much have pretty strict rules on GMOs and what you can and cannot put in your bread? Here in the States, if I eat a good, yummy, delicious pasta, I feel hangover the next day. When I travel to Europe, I was in Greece not that long ago. I kid you not, all I ate was bread, 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 bread. And I felt fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe the stress reduction too. <laughs> and the amazing wheat. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it's true. People say it over and over again. I felt it myself, you know, in, in any trip overseas. I've always mm -hmm. felt better. And, you know, of course, there's no way I'm going to France and not having a baguette. And there's no, no way I'm going to, you know, Turkey and not having baklava. I mean, and in Greece, mm -hmm. too, you know, it's going to happen. So mm -hmm. it's it, it's different, right? It's different because of the regulations. And so when I'm looking at diets for folks, and especially perimenopausal women, we're like, what are all the things we can do to decrease inflammation, right? Like 
every right. single thing we can do to make things better, especially for the gut, because most of us have leaky gut because we're stressed and we eat on the go and we yes. don't sit down. So yes. that's also part of my thing for folks is like, you got to focus on eating and eating only sitting down, chewing your food, take your time. You know, am I perfect at it all the time? Absolutely not. But I do try to prioritize now. I've learned in the past, you know, hard way that doesn't work. You get bloated. You don't feel good. But you yeah. don't. One of our good friends, Rick Bayless, who is a pretty famous chef. Yeah. He said that in his restaurants, all the staff members, all the, you know, servers, whomever, when they are eating, he tells them, you have got to sit down. So that's the best policy. Also, when you put this mindfulness, especially for perimenopausal females, we tend to, we're busy, just like you said, we're very busy. So to be able to sit down and look at your food, smell it, really enjoy it and see how beautiful it is, that's already solving a lot of problems because this way you will eliminate mindless snacking on things that don't bring you joy and don't bring you enough nourishment. The croissant or baguette you mentioned, mm -hmm. it's fantastic, but not all the time. Right. When you really sit down and you get to look at it, how beautiful it is and how much labor went into it and then enjoy it, I guarantee you only eat half of it. <laughs> <laughs> It's true. There's definitely some, there's an art, I think, to to being able to approach each meal much like you are on a river having dinner in France mm -hmm. or somewhere just glorious. Mm -hmm. I, I think of a place in Turkey on, on the Bosphorus, you know, just wherever anyone could imagine, you know, having their most glorious, like, chill dinner. Try to totally. imagine that environment. Totally. And when you say organic, I could not agree more. When I was younger, I didn't understand uh, as much about the science and why it matters. All I knew is that it costs a dollar or two more. But now I know what I'm paying for. There is, um, I was reading about this in The Economist a few weeks ago, 2% decrease in our bug population in the United States year after year after year. And that's because of the use of pesticides. Now, one would ask, why the heck do we care? It's shockingly, they're doing studies on this right now, but it shockingly correlates with the rates of inflammation and fertility as well, because every year we drop by about 2% in the wrong direction. Oh, wow. So if there's no, if there's obviously correlation right now, is it a causation? Well, time will tell, but it's pretty obvious. So why wouldn't you spend a dollar more to really have the beautiful, good, wholesome food? If you can, well, I know there's food deserts. I know sometimes you can't, and there's really no bad food. There's just, there's food and there's better food. So if you can afford better food, get better food. Whole, wholeheartedly. Yeah. Up, up level your food, up level your food. And, and really, up level I, your food. I, you know, kind of going down those lines of the insulin resistance and what I see for a lot of women, you know, two things. One, there's a lot of women that, that are snacking on their kid, their kid food that their mm -hmm. kids have. And now they've got processed stuff going in with weird colors and dyes. And, and there's that side, but then there's also the yes, cravings and, and needing to get something quick because they don't have enough time. And then they're going towards the processed foods and, and junk foods and, you know, sitting in the line at uh, McDonald's or somewhere of that nature. And so this is where I also like try to carve out time to meal prep, even if, say you don't do 100% organic, at least trying to make your own food. Totally. When I tell my patients, when you come from a grocery store, you have to unpack everything. So might as well cut up your fruits and vegetables. So at least vegetables, fruits are usually easier to eat. But if you cut them up and put them in the fridge, then it's just a matter of grabbing this with your hand and not going through this whole 15 minute ordeal. So yes, meal prep and Harvard plate is the easiest thing. I That's my easy trick for my women friends with children or without as well. Uh, you can buy on Amazon for like $12, those little kiddo plates, they're <laughs> medium size and they have three little dividers. So I, the way I structure meals is the big one is for fruits and vegetables. 
One of the small ones is for what we traditionally describe as protein, so nuts and meats and eggs, whatever it may be. And the last little one is for what we traditionally define as carbs. You and I know that carbs is a huge term, but whatever, let's just call them carbs for the purposes of this conversation, where you can put your noodles and your grains, uh, maybe the little baguette. Mm -hmm. And that's one portion control. And B, it's just healthy and beautiful. And of course, a glass of water with it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Now, those are great. Those are great tools to help folks really realize, um, you know, kind of train your brain basically to know what should be on a plate. Let's put it that way, because I think, yeah, we, we get so far off. That. And I I know that we should really be able to learn a new behavior, but sometimes it's tricky. So a small thing like avoid junk food in your house. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Put only the junk food that's really not the junkie. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. My junk food still is my nuts, but I am not, not eating pounds of them um, anymore. And I think I think that's a really smart idea. You know, one of the things I was curious about, because you have a background in chiropractic medicine and yeah. And a lot of women will start to experience, you know, yes, there's inflammation, the puffy kind of feelings and the mm. bloaty feelings, but there's also the pain that does seem to yeah. come along. And you were describing a little bit of the EMS, you know, using those types of treatments for pain. Have you found any other correlations to, to pain in women and, and maybe pelvic floor in addition or anything else, emotional, et cetera, that you've learned? Yes. Yes. When it comes to decrease again in those darn hormones, um, testosterone is definitely a huge one as well as estrogen. Uh, they are going to cause us to feel more discomfort, more pain, more inflammation. Things to do outside of hormone supplementation would be to stick with the guidelines of exercising re regularly. Mm -hmm. We now know that women who, because it's usually women with fib who have fibromyalgia, women with fibromyalgia who start to exercise any exercise regimen, including walking, are going to experience decrease of their pain symptoms. We also know that people who don't exercise at all are going to exhibit the same pain symptoms and pain map that people with fibromyalgia. Hmm. So just movement is incredibly powerful. Movement is not going to make you lose weight, but it's going to make you feel good. It's all about your longevity, morbidity, mortality. And then we go back to our food having things, we're preaching to the choir here and repeating ourselves, but non-GMO, as organic as you can, as close to mother nature, as low processed as you can. And that helps tremendously. Lastly, it's going to be this mind-body connection. If one can establish a breathing, meditation, mindfulness practice, that has been shown by plethora of research it is also going to impact your pain in a very positive way where you won't be experiencing that high levels of pain anymore. Mm -hmm. So those are little tricks that people can try to do on their own. You know, um, my my husband just recently started his meditation practice. It took him a long time. Yes, you know, he's like this bro. Um, mm -hmm. He joined a Vestige group, which is a group for entrepreneurs. And that's when he learned that all of his CEO and entrepreneur friends are meditating. Like, I got to do it. What a difference. What a, the guy has more energy and he's not complaining about pain anymore. Hmm. Hmm. And we can do the same thing for us, for us, for beautiful women who just are more open to that knowledge. <laughs> Interesting mm -hmm. you say that, because I think a lot of women, one of the things I'll hear, you know, kind of the same as the exercise, kind of the same as the food is, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough time. And, and you know, this is probably a speech that you make a lot and with mm -hmm. your clients too, is like, okay, well, do you have enough time to get really sick and not be able to do anything? What's Ouch, your, right? Yeah, yeah. What's your statement for folks? What's kind of your inspiration to be like, you don't have enough time, but... I dig into what is most important to you. Is it your dog? Is <laughs> it your significant other? Is it travel? And then uh, there's a quote that I read a while back, and I'm probably going to butcher it right now, but 
it's uh if you if you have your health you have one million dreams if you don't have your health you only have one dream mm -hmm. so which one is it is it five minutes of meditation and 20 minutes of miha a week or are we giving up on all the things that you love and moving into that state of this is disease. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you mentioned going after what someone loves or, or, or a passion mm -hmm. that someone has. And I think for a lot of women who do have more time and prioritize a little bit, a lot of us do have our volunteer opportunities and the things that kind of light us up and, and help with lifting the mood mm -hmm. up a little bit too. And, and one of the things I've kind of learned over the years is that being able to give back helps you to feel good, but it also seems to help you step out of the woe is me a little bit too. And I noticed that you have some some projects you've worked on over the years, like the Salt and Light Coalition. I also see mm -hmm. a couple of other things in there in terms of the Autism Speaks groups and, and things of that nature. Can you talk a little bit about your experience with these groups and especially the Salt and Light Coalition? Because I think that speaks to where a lot of women, let's say, are at because there is a lot of for lack of a better term, a lot of us going through menopause, not feeling great about ourselves, and we're stuck in relationships that are not great. But there's also, you know, still this maybe overarching of, of we all know about it. We know that there's slavery. We know that there's things going on. We know that there's, you know, trafficking. It, explain to folks a little bit about your work there and, and how that helps impact you, but help, you know, you to help other women to see that even if you've been through all of these different things, you can still take care of you and and help yourself as you get older. I that's awesome. It's my hugest passion. I love it so much. I don't even know where to begin. Such a great question. Salt and Light Coalition is an organization that was started by, by my friend Isabel Olson. Uh, she started it because I mean, she's very she's just the nicest, warmest, wonderful person. She has. Uh, her PhD and she's a therapist she's just brilliant and she saw a need especially here in Chicago to find a home and help for women who are victims of sex abuse trafficking modern slavery so she brings um, this cohort of women together and what we do together is guide them, not only through the legal debacles that a lot of them are faced with, you know, losing their children, having a criminal record, but then to help them heal their own bodies. My job for a while there was to teach them anatomy and physiology. Mm -hmm. And it sounds so silly, but the more you know about your own body, the more confident you feel. For a lot of these women, because of the way they grew up, where they were from, their development, emotional development ended at, you know, 12, 13 years old. And then they were dragged into this horrible life. And as a 12, 13 year old girl, you have, you think you have nothing to give to this world other than how you look at your body, this external surface of your body. And that drags on for years and years and sometimes generations, which is awful. So here, when you're learning about how things work, where your muscles are, how cool it is when you're breathing, that your diaphragm is moving and your legs are expanding, it gives them more power. And after that training, there some of them are choosing to become yoga instructors and they become tra trauma certified. And then they teach other women how to get out of their situations and how to heal their own bodies. I also mentor them now and help to find them employment, etc. cetera. But uh, what's really cool is the story of one woman. I met her about six years ago now. And when I met her, she unfortunately lost her leg uh, due to heavy drug use. And she was just in the beginning of her journey. She was training, trying to get a custody of her child. I saw her again last year. She works for Salt and Light now. She not and she never she never finished high school. Not only she got her GED, she was entering her she was in the middle of her master's program in psychology. Nice. She her kid is back with her. She's in a happy relationship and she bought her own house. I mean, 
that huge transformation and to know that I played a tiny, tiny part in helping her to then help so many others is just thrilling. It's the best feeling ever. Mm. That's beautiful. And and I think, you know, what you're describing is, is probably one of the things that, yes, younger women can can glean some experience from, but also some of the empty nester women. Because I'm oh. also finding that some of the some of the women that are really struggling the most in my practice are the ones whose kids went off to college. They're on their own now. They're still in the and mom's still in that perimenopausal age. She has not gotten into mm-hmm. menopause yet. And all these symptoms are flying. And she's like, I have no purpose. I have no purpose. These are things mm-hmm. to look for, looking for somewhere. That's what I told my mom when she was entering the stage when I when I left her and she stayed in Poland all by herself. <laughs> I told her, Mom, uh, you have to volunteer. You have to do something. And whether it's if you are a part of a church, you can always reach out to your church, your synagogue, whatever your affiliation is, there is going to be work for you. There are so just find something that you are passionate about, maybe the well-being of children, whatever it is. There's so many organizations out there that will take either your time or if you don't have that much time, your money, but will send you updates to, to show you where that monetary contribution is going. And again, I know I go back to things that are backed by science, but being altruistic helps you to feel better about yourself. And to be all disjointed in your perimenopausal age <laughs> <laughs> and then find that one thing, it helps to bring home all of this inwards, makes you feel better. So why not do it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's really one of the things that I've kind of looked for in 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 my my new transition, mm-hmm. right, from being out of in the office practice all the time into my next level in life to figure out like, okay, where can I give back? Because I do believe that this energetic flow of coming in and giving back, it keeps it keeps the circle going, just like you said, and you do feel better with that. Because I think so, so much of the time we can get really lost in all these symptoms and like, what is happening to me? It's all coming down, you know? Totally. Yeah. And in a lot of uh, faiths, the overarching kind of theme is that a quarter of what you have, you should give back. So if you don't have the money, the quarter of your, it sounds like a lot, I know, but the quarter of your time, your money, your efforts, if you give back, it is going to come back yielding more than you ever thought was possible. I'm going like the secret right now. <laughs> Remember the Oprah Winfrey book? <laughs> The yeah. secret. <laughs> Maybe that is the secret. I don't know. But if right. you create abundance around yourself, it really does come back to you. I, I whole pretty profound. I wholeheartedly agree. I think you know, for for so many women at this stage in life, it's really rethinking, perhaps all the things we've been told, and all you mm-hmm. know, and and really starting to rediscover our own way of thinking, and maybe Heck yeah. You know, you know, maybe you believe in the secret stuff or or law of attraction or all that, you know, if you sure. guys are thinking and you're like, what is she talking about? You know, maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's it's all finding finding your passion, finding you again, because I, I don't know how you feel about this, Dominica, but there's there's that concept that or term that's used all the time, midlife crisis. And I'm like, you know, what? I think it's a midlife blessing, really. I never heard that expression and I love it so much. I'm going to use it all the time. You can have it. You can have it. Because I think I truly believe like we've been labeled this thing like midlife crisis. Women, you know, do they do this, they do that. The guys do this, they do that. Well, maybe it's just exploration of who you really were in the Mm -hmm. first place before you decided to take one pattern, you know, one direction. And now you're coming back to who you really are. I don't know. Totally. Because the Mm -hmm. beauty of being in that stage of life, of being in your late 30s, 40s, early 50s, is that you don't really have to prove anything to anyone Mm -hmm. you don't so now you can be yourself and whatever other people just be kind be kind is my only rule (laughs) other than that you do you and just live it up yeah you don't even have to worry about your period anymore in two years how cool is that (laughs) (laughs) oh boy i'm counting the days i'm counting the days dominica but (laughs) but never the in between 
you know what? We have folks like you that are out there helping us to to really what see what see what's out there that we can do in terms of solutions and just really have a sense of of hey, someone's got my back and there are things out there. So let's tell everybody about Balance Flow Wellness. Let's tell them how they can find you, where they can find you on online, all the things so that they can hone in on what you're up to and find find out if you're a good fit for them. Well, thank you so much for this endorsement here. Uh, <laughs> Balanced Flow Wellness. The website is balancedflow.today. So not come, not <laughs> not, not yesterday, tomorrow, today. That's today. That's a weird one. Uh, we are located in Backdown neighborhood of Chicago and looking at a location in Highland Park, Illinois as well. Yes. Yes. It's just going closer and closer and closer. Uh, we do everything from accelerated physical therapy to health optimization. At, and we love working with women because guess what? I'm a woman. <laughs> <laughs> we know ourselves best. We know ourselves best. Boy, I hope you can get the the Highland Park one coming up soon because that is a quick train ride down from my dad's house. So Woo-hoo! no traffic right on that line right there on the Metro. Super easy. Super. Oh, easy. and that's ninety ninety four is killing my patients. So yes, yeah. So oh, construction. <laughs> everybody north of Highland Park, Lake Forest, Lake Bluff, all of you guys, Libertyville, you you can come in on a different direction. But hey, everybody up there, we can we can get in to see you guys because I think this. You know, you have what I don't see. Right, we we have the aesthetics people, we have this mm-hmm. people, we have that people, and you guys yeah. have like really the holistic approach for the foundation of of health when it comes to perimenopause and even into menopause you know oh yeah i mean i like you said before before we hit record is what is it going to be like when we're in our 80s and we have this conversation i'm like we keep the trajectory going of balance flow wellness into yes our 80s health. absolutely absolutely let's feel the best we can for as long as we're able mm. i'm gonna mic drop on that one dominica you hit it right <laughs> on head done Thank you for coming on. I sincerely appreciate it. Such good stuff. I hope folks really enjoy this podcast. Thank you so much. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.